maid. Jillian. Hello, darling. Come on in. I feel a little reluctant coming here in the evenings, but I couldn't find Frank. Well, he breezed in here <laughs> during breakfast. I haven't seen him since. I think he had some kind of a welfare committee, committee meeting. Oh, yeah. I think you might be right. I did see him this afternoon at his office, but then things got a little upset, and I, I forgot to ask him where he'd be tonight. Darling, don't hover there in the doorway. Come on in. Sit down. Hmm? Maeve, is Delia upstairs? No. She went over to visit Jack at the hospital. Then I guess it's all right. We saw each other once today, and once was too much. Oh, I'm sorry that she's gotten it into her head that you want to take little John away from her. Maeve, hmm. you and Johnny know, don't you, that the custody suit wasn't my idea. Oh, of course it wasn't, dear. Frank wants his son with him. I think in the long run that'll be best for everyone. And if you and Frank are planning a life together, I'm glad that you want the baby with you. And in spite of the fact that I don't know anything about babies, I really believe that I could have been a good mother to your grandson. What do you mean, could have been? Oh, Maeve. I didn't mean to say that. It just slipped out. I suppose because it's... I have so many things that I want to tell you. Darling, is there some kind of trouble between you and Frank? No, it's... Oh, chilling child. What in the world is going on? What is... Uh, 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 I tell you, I missed my calling. I should have been a diplomat. Huh? What's the matter with you? That's what I'm trying to find out, dear. It's all right, Johnny. I'd much rather hear about your aborted diplomatic career. So tell me, how did you decide you made the wrong turn? I just persuaded Jack Finelli to come here and recuperate. Oh! God help us all. <laughs> oh, Johnny, this really is the best place for Jack. Of course it is. Well, it's the best thing for Mary. Imagine the, the hassle of going through a thing like that by yourself. <laughs> Darling, I was magnificent. Oh, the voice of sweet reason. You would have been proud of me. <laughs> I am, John, I am. John, what's the matter with you, anyway? It's all right. Now, then, would you like to go upstairs and lie down? Yes, I would, Mae. Oh, would. come on, I'll go with you. No, 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 come on. This is your busy time. And I really need a minute or two by myself. Oh, sure. Maybe we'll talk later, all right? Anytime, you know that. Now, go on up. Mrs. Shaw has taken little John to visit her sister for an hour or so, and you have the place all to yourself. Thank you. The girl's not well. Well, F Faith did all those tests on her, didn't she? Yes, she did, but I haven't heard a word about them. Did you just come from Jack? Yeah. Mary was coming in just as I was going out. Oh, was she happy the thing is finally settled. Oh, I'm sure she was. Oh, John Ryan, that was a fine piece of work. Jack Finelli is not an easy man. Oh, I know that. Was uh, D over the hospital? No, oh, no. I hope with Jillian upstairs, she doesn't take it into her head to come home and use the front door. than any other person I've ever known. What you really want is to take my place completely, right? Dee, we have nothing more to say to each other, so if you'll excuse me, I'll be on my way. What are you doing here? Actually, I was lying here, formulating a plot to kidnap Frank and little John. Where's my baby? I believe Maeve said that uh, Mrs. Shaw took him for a walk. I want to know what the hell you're doing here! I was looking for Frank. Well, don't you think it's a very strange place to find him? Why don't you go back home and look in your bed? That's where he's been spending most of his time the last two or three years. Well, if that's true, have you ever asked yourself why? You've got to be kidding me. That's some question coming from the number one husband stealer of all time. I think the answer is because it must be pretty boring going to bed with somebody who's essentially in love with herself. Get out of here. Get out of my sight. <gasps> Jill, I don't for one minute think that you're hurt. You're faking. Get up and get out of here. Jill! Oh, oh God. 
Oh, man. I can't believe it. You never said a word. Congratulations. Well, when, darling? When's the due? May. When? May. Oh, that's wonderful. Hey, I can't get out. Oh, oh, yeah. This is I'm great. Little... What did Jack oh. say? I haven't told him yet. Help me. Hey, it's Dave. What is it? Help me. Somebody help me. Charlie, somebody help me. Come upstairs quick. Kill Jill Coleridge. Somebody help me. I killed Jill. Jill, upstairs. Fanny, Fanny, help me. Help me. Okay, I got a pulse. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. She isn't dead. No, D, you didn't kill her. Uh, now, how did it happen, D? What happened, D? I, I don't. She she fell. And she she tripped over the, the tricycle and and then she she fell against the desk and, and then she hit her head just like. Like what? I don't know. I can't see. Did you see her hit her head? <laughs> yes. No, no, I mean, I know I didn't. I, I, I heard her hit something. That's it, I heard her. Pat, Pat, you want, want me to help you? We'll lift no, you up to the no. couch. Call the hospital, will you? Wait a minute, sure. She's that color. The same color Jack was when I... She's gonna die. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got an emergency here. Hold on, here's a doctor. Hold on. Hello, uh, this is Dr. Ryan uh, from Neurology. I'm in second floor apartment above Ryan's bar across the street. I got an accident victim here. I need ER personnel and a stretcher on the double. Great. Thank you. I better call Frank. You've really done it this time, do you? All right, now tell me, what happened up there? Give me the whole story and no hysterics. It, it wasn't my fault. Truly, John, oh, it wasn't my fault. Just what happened, straight? She fell. She, she fell and she tripped over the tricycle. Yeah, and then she hit her head, right? <laughs> it scared me half to death. Look, I'm not concerned now about how scared you are. Is that all that happened? Oh, we were having an argument. We always have an argument. It, it wasn't my fault. Do you? When you came running down, why does the chief you said that you you killed her? I, I was scared. Well, I didn't know what to say. Well, it must something must have happened to make you say that. I, I gave her a shot. It was nothing. I didn't mean it. Oh dear Lord! How would you feel if you walked into the house and you saw the woman who's trying to break up your whole family and take your baby and your husband away from you, sitting on the couch so? Cozy, I was furious at her. I couldn't, I couldn't reach Faith to Roger, but Frank's on his way. Oh, Frank's gonna be mad at me. He's not gonna believe me that it was an accident. He's gonna think that I planned the whole thing. Planned what? It was an accident. Da? Well, as far as I can tell, Dee gave Jill a push, and she fell back, tripped over the baby's trike. Pushed? Mary, don't look at me like I planned it. It was an accident. You pushed Jill by accident? Why are you asking me? I mean, you're so smart, you probably know everything, right? Everybody knows how smart Mary is, what a high IQ she has, and how she knows ESP and everything. I bet you know exactly how it happened, huh? You stop it. No, Maeve, I can't stop it. I bet Mary knows how I, uh, I opened up the desk, and then I, uh, placed the tricycle, and then I, uh, pushed Jill just in the right way so she would fall and hit her head. Did ya? And she thinks I did it without even practicing, huh, Mary? Dear. Huh, Mary? Dear, now you stop that this instant. That's exactly the kind of tantrum that's responsible for where we are right this minute. Jill Coleridge in there, unconscious. 
heaven knows how badly hurt, because your temper lashes out. I mean, because we, whenever you feel threatened. Now, well, nobody is threatening you right this minute. That's all we're accusing you of. Now tell me the simple truth. What happened? I am telling you the truth. I didn't have to tell you that I pushed her, okay? But I did. And Mary thinks it's the worst you all do. What do you expect us to think, Delia? If you, a girl falls and you say it was an accident, right? Then you say, then you say you pushed her, and you say we're fighting. I never said fighting. I remember I never what John. you said. John, John, that's not good anyway. Thank God that courage isn't alive to see what's happening. Did you? Jill was lying on the couch, and... Yeah. Yes. Well, she had come to visit me, and she was feeling troubled, and she wasn't feeling very well, and I sent her in there to lie down. But if I didn't even know that... Well, what did you think she was doing I up there, did I didn't know what she was doing up there. I figured she came up to visit little John. Or, or see... There she was. She was on my sofa. She was under my afghan. She was taking my place. And, and one thing led to another. And we had an argument, and I tried to stop her, and I couldn't, and it was an accident. You're all against me. You're all on her side. You're all on Frank's side. What's going on? It was an accident, Frank. I swear it. Frank, Pat's with Jill. Look. What they say, go see what's holding up. Frank, she's unconscious. She had a fall. She got a bad blow on the head. I've ordered skull x-rays. Now, there's a, apparently no other injuries. At worst, it may be a fracture. Oh, Jill. But at worst, look, we won't know until we get a set of pictures. But there's no... Uh, no depression in the skull, so it's very unlikely there's any brain damage. She may have a concussion. We're just gonna have to watch her carefully for any complications. When are you gonna get those x-rays? Right away. Now, if you could go out in the waiting area, I'll, I'll come out and if, if there's any news, I promise. Look, uh, just let me have one minute with her, okay? All right, but short, huh? Because you're just gonna be in the way. All right, all right, thanks, then. You see, it's just that you mix us up so. You, you seem to want to turn us one against the other. Now, I don't know whether you mean to do that or not. Oh, no, I don't. All right. Now, I want to believe you. Lord knows I want to believe you. I don't like losing my temper, but when I try to get a straight answer, yeah, and I, I can't. I'm scared. I'm still scared. Well, what do you think I am? What do you think we all are? Not like me. Johnny, what's going to happen to me? I don't know. It's up to you, isn't it? No. No, it, it's not up to me anymore, because I don't have anybody on my side, not even Bad is on my side anymore. You all say that I, that I pushed Jill on purpose. Well, I didn't. You're going to use that to take the baby away from me. It's going to be the end of everything. There you go again. You're talking about using, using. Look, nobody wants to use anything against you. Why can't you understand that, Dee? We're not against you. Now, look, there, you're the mother of our grandson. There is nothing better than for a child to be with his mother, right? But when you behave like you did today, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not easy to, to, to cope with things with you. I'm sorry, Johnny. It was an accident. It was really an accident. Okay. Okay, you're sorry. But being sorry and being trusted is two different things. By rights, we should all be having drinks on Johnny Ryan at the bar tonight. Oh, with a fiddler for a reel and him making a toast loud and long into the night because his daughter Mary has given him such joy by announcing that she's with child. Like for Kathleen? Mm hmm Twice for Kathleen. And Dee, and all the grandchildren. Same old toast, but I like it. I think it's a beautiful toast. Mm. Poor Mary, darling. You'll get your fiddler and your toast, and the sweeter it'll be for having waited. You'll do it every time, right? Oh, don't even think about that. Think about the gift that God just gave you and the babe that you're going to share with Jack. And with you? Mm, with us. Uh -huh. 
so scared. Is Jill okay? Yeah, I'm sure Jill's gonna be just fine. She had a good knock on the head, and we've gotta be very careful, but it doesn't look too bad. I feel responsible. Hey, Nadine, you didn't kill her. It was an accident. Frank, it, it really, really was an accident. I didn't mean to. Sure, Dee. Just like you didn't mean to push me down that flight of stairs. <laughs> Promise me you wouldn't tell you gave me a solemn word. Pushed? He promised. They're never gonna understand. They're never gonna be fair to me. It flashed through my mind when, when Da said that Dee pushed Jill. I dismissed it. But, but then I remember that was the first word you uttered when you regained consciousness. That word, pushed. All this time, he never said anything. Why, Frank? I didn't want my son growing up with the knowledge that his mother nearly killed his father. That's not the only reason. And to protect you, Dee. Me? And the family. Wait a minute. To protect yourself? Sure. You cared about the family. And you, and you cared about little John. But the thing that you care most about was your political career and Jill. And a scandal would ruin your career. And you could never get elected to the city council if there was a scandal. Isn't that the reason? Part of it. All you wanted was your career and Jill. And if people found out that I pushed you, they'd want to know why I pushed you. So why don't you tell them why I did it? Why did I do it, Frank? I had just told Delia I was going to leave her for Jill. And she tried to kill you? Oh, I didn't try. I'm not me. No, no, I don't believe she did. She just pushed me out of blind rage, wanting to hurt me, but not, not to kill me, no. 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 Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know he would fall that way. I really didn't know that. We were on the stairs. <laughs> And before I realized it, he was falling. And he was falling, and he was falling, and there was nothing I could do about it. I didn't know he would fall that way. Stop it. Stop I it. I didn't know he would fall that way. You did mean to hurt me. No, I didn't. Just the way you wanted to hurt Jill tonight. No. No, I was mad at her. But you still wanted to hurt her. I... I was mad at her. She, she threatened me with all sorts of things. She was threatening to take my baby away from me. And you wanted to get back at her, and so you hit out at her. Frank, I didn't know that tricycle was going to be there. I didn't know she was going to fall. Somebody believe me. Somebody believe me. Uh, Patty, Patty, let me just explain it to you. Uh, Pat, let, let me just talk to you. Let me just explain it to you. There isn't much you can tell me. I think you better call your lawyer. Hello? Miss Bernie? Anne, uh, this is Delia Ryan. I'm sorry to call you so late, but uh, something terrible has happened. Are you all right? I'm scared out of my mind. Miss Bernie, tonight I almost killed Jill Coleridge. You nearly what? I pushed her and she fell and she hit her head. She's in the hospital and she's unconscious. And the whole family is, is furious with me and Pat won't even talk to me. He just said I should get in touch with my lawyer. Where are you? I'm at home. I'm, I'm at the Ryan's. I left uh, Maeve and Johnny at the emergency room. Please, could you come over here? I'll be over in 20 minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just uh, phoned my lawyer. That's what Pat said I should do. How's Jill? Well, they were taking her up for x-rays. Pat's supposed to let us know. 
I'm going to splash some water on my face. Julia, wait a minute. Mary, I, I don't want you to yell at me. No, well, I'm not going to yell at you. I just want to talk to you. Well, I don't want to hear it. I don't care. Just be quiet and listen. And do me one favor. For the next two minutes, spare me the sobs and the hurt feelings and the helpless little looks. You're about as helpless as a bulldozer. You are not sweet and childlike. You are selfish and destructive and more than a little bit crazy. May you get it Wouldn't stop, call please? on her for help, honey. That's the lady whose son you pushed down a flight of stairs. And that's what I want to tell you. When I think of Frank falling and breaking his back, when I think of all those days we spent in the hospital room with Mother sitting by the side of his bed, when I think of Da's face the night Frank almost died, and all the sympathy and love you accepted from this family when all the time you were responsible. When I think of that, Dee, I know there is no way I will ever forgive you. And I want you to know that loud and clear. You mean. You're mean to me, and you're being unfair to me because you don't know the whole story at all. You don't know what it's like to lie next to your husband night after night, knowing that he's just made love to another woman. The night that, that Frank fell, he came back from Jill's house, and I followed him to the hospital. He was giving Roger the blackmail money. And he told me that he was going to leave little John and me. And I got mad at him, and I hit him. And I got mad at Jill, and I hit her. But Frank was falling down the stairs, and I didn't want to hurt him like that. Now I've been paying for it a thousand times over, Mary, and I'm still paying for it. Why didn't you tell us, Dave? Because Frank didn't want you to hate me. I knew you'd think that it was my fault. I just knew it. You take Frank and Jill's side, right? Am I right? For most of these years now, we've been on your side. We've loved and protected you. For all those years, most of the time, you've behaved like an overgrown infant. No, me, that's not true. I'm a wife and I'm, I'm a mother. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. You're a mother. A mother who has tantrums when she can't get her own way. A wife who won't join in her husband's life unless she can be the center of attention. Off you've gone merrily on your way, demanding and getting. And, of course, we've been all to blame. Often precious little. We've encouraged you in it. Well, now it's just a little different, dear. People are being hurt, and this family is being divided. And you stand there, and you shed a tear, and say you're sorry, and you expect everything to be the same. I'm sorry, please, I am sorry. I don't think it much matters. It does matter to me. Maybe you're the only mother I've got. I don't feel much like your mother. I feel very tired. Look, sweetheart, why don't you go and lie down? I'll be in a minute. That's a good idea, John. Come in later, dear, before you go to bed. Yeah. Huh? Johnny, talk to her. Tell her I, I didn't mean to hurt Frank, and I didn't mean to hurt Jill. You know I'm not a vicious person. I would never do that on purpose Look, to anybody. Look, Dee, Dee, I... Dee. If I were you, I wouldn't say another word. Good night. patience and compassion than I have. I don't want to talk to Dee. I don't want to see her. I know, I know. And here you are with the best piece of news this family's had in months. And Dee manages to focus everybody's attention on her. I have to admit, that thought occurred to me, too. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. My Mary, with the freckles and the pigtail and the terrible temper that she got from nobody but me, my dear, beautiful child is going to have a child of her own. That's about it. Oh, sweetheart, I'm so happy for you. So you're responsible for your husband's hospitalization last year? Yes. And you sent Miss Coleridge to the hospital tonight? Well, she's not um, hurt as badly as Frank was. Miss Bernie, they were both accidents. Good Lord. I know I was supposed to be perfectly honest with you because you're my lawyer. But Frank and I promised each other we wouldn't say anything to anybody. Is there anything else you neglected to tell me? Perhaps you've poisoned someone? Don't joke about this, please. Mrs. Ryan, you better be happy I'm not walking right out that door. Didn't it occur to you your husband would use your pushing him down the stairs at the custody hearing? <laughs> it's shattering evidence against you. I didn't think that the accident would have anything to do with my being a good mother. And nobody knew about it until tonight. Now the whole family knows. And tomorrow, Judge Wallach will know. What will he do? Look, I have to be honest with you. I doubt that I can pull off a miracle, which means that your chances of getting custody of little John are practically nil. <laughs> 